Hi there. In the live session last night, I went over most of dynamics and space. So in this video, I'll answer the one question which was on projectiles that I didn't have time to do at that point. You'll see on the screen, these are the results from the online poll from my website. At the bottom of that home page, you can click in order to click different boxes to tell me which topics you would find most difficult. And obviously I would then try and incorporate them in future lessons. Of course, as I said before in the video yesterday, it's completely anonymous. The only information that I get through is information on the boxes which have been ticked and any additional information you've typed in about the, the topics you want me to go over. So it certainly looks from that graph, apart from transistor circuits, I've mentioned them before. Hopefully there should be a short video explaining transistor circuits in a bit more detail at some point. But certainly projectiles is up there as one of the topics that people are finding tricky. So certainly what I didn't want to do is leave this question undone. So let's see, here's the question then. It says a football is kicked horizontally from a cliff at 5 metres per second as shown in the diagram below. Sketch the path taken by the football as it falls from the cliff to the ground. Now remember, again, you can be working with, you don't need a calculator in this one with your pen and paper. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to find another diagram, which is the actual answer of this one. Once I've given you a second just to think of the answer. And what you should have been drawing is something along these lines. So we're looking for a curve. And of course the reason it's a curve is because the projectile is going to be following this motion here throughout its path. It'll have a constant horizontal velocity of five meters per second. That won't change. And I'm talking about its velocity in the horizontal direction. What will be happening though, vertically, we have an acceleration. So vertically on Earth, it's going to be accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second each second. So you can split its motion into two components. Horizontally, we have a constant velocity. Vertically, we have a constant acceleration. And that's at 9.8 ms to the minus 2. And that's why it's following this curved path. If we can find part B, so this is where we'll start calculating. Part B of the question looks like so. And these are the kind of questions that people will find difficult because they'll be mixing up the horizontal and the vertical velocities. It's saying the football takes 1.2 seconds to fall from the cliff to the ground. And part one, state the horizontal velocity of the football as it reaches the ground. Now, as we said, it's going to be following a path like this, the parabolic path like so, like a curve, throughout its motion, its horizontal velocity is going to be constant. So that's just going to be 5 meters per second. Now we'd normally just be asked for the, the magnitude of the horizontal velocity if we needed to state the direction, that would be 5 meters per second, in this case, to the left. Part two of the question, we're asked to work out, the, calculate the vertical velocity of the football as it reaches the ground. Now remember, as I said, it's going to be falling downwards and accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second. Hopefully you've seen an experiment in class with apparatus where one ball is projected horizontally and another one falls straight down and they both hit the desk or hit the floor at exactly the same time. And that shows you that horizontal velocity is independent to, or horizontal motion is independent to vertical motion. They both accelerate towards the ground at the same rate, 9.8 ms to minus two. What we need to do in this one is we can use the equation, this acceleration equation, A is equal to V minus U over T but then rearrange that in order to find the vertical velocity, V is equal to U plus AT. Now this velocity here is the vertical velocity, that's what we're trying to find out. It's not the 5 meters per second, that's the horizontal velocity, and 
horizontal velocity, vertical velocity have to be treated independently. This value of u, that's the initial vertical velocity. Now because it says in the question, uh, here of course it's saying that the, in fact it was in the last part, where it said that the ball was projected horizontally. If it's projected horizontally, then yes, it has a an initial horizontal velocity of five meters per second, but its initial vertical velocity is zero meters per second. And as we said, it's going to be accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second. Now you'll not find that number in the data sheets. What you will find in the data sheets is the gravitational field strength, and that's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So hopefully we remember that the, the value of gravitational field strength on Earth, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, is numerically equal to the acceleration due to gravity, and that's 9.8 ms to the minus 2 meters per second per second. So what do we say in this question? U is zero initial vertical velocity, it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second per second downwards and that is for a time of 1.2 seconds. And if we look to the calculator to work this out, we've got 0 plus 9.8 multiplied by 1.2 gives us 11.76 now, of course, this number is given to two significant figures, as is this value. So we'll write two significant figures in the final answer. And there we go. I mean, if we wanted to write a direction, of course, if we needed to write the direction, we'd say downwards. Sometimes in these questions, they'll actually just ask for the magnitude of the vertical velocity. So if it's just the magnitude we need, then we just need to say 12 meters per second. Well, that answers part B. One last part to the question, which is obviously part C, which is down here. And it's saying state the height, sorry, it's not state, calculate the height of the cliff. Now, there are a few ways you could work this out. Probably the easiest, I would say. And we'll need this value, I'll move that up there. We'll need that value of 12 meters per second downwards to work this out the first way. First way I would say, probably the, the easier way, is to draw a velocity time graph just for the vertical velocity. So vertically, I'll move that up slightly. Vertically, if this is V and that's in meters per second, and this is time in seconds, then we know that in a time of 1.2 seconds, what's going to be happening is trace this back hopefully to the or origin, that's a straight line, we have a uniform acceleration or constant acceleration for 1.2 seconds and after 1.2 seconds the vertical velocity has increased to 12 meters per second. Now of course you would get slightly different answer, remember we had 11.76 so if you're writing to three significant figures, you would have rounded that to 11.8. And of course, you would then have 11.8 here. So it, it really depends. Your answer to this part depends on the number of significant figures you've written here. Technically, we should have written, as I have here, two significant figures. So what we'll do at this point is that, of course, we've got a velocity time graph here. And the distance traveled, remember, is equal to the area under the velocity time graph. And I'll write that down. Height. Height is of course the distance we're trying to work out. And that's the area under the VT graph. And that area would be equal to, because it's a triangle, half times the base times the height. So 0 0.5 times 1.2 times 12 gives us 7.2 meters. And that's one way we could have worked out this answer. There are other ways, so I'm going to show you another way. The second method we could have used, in fact, I'll move to a different piece of paper, is like so now. As I said, we've got a constant acceleration 
from 0 to 12 meters per second, what we could have done then is work at the average velocity. And average velocity is equal to u plus v divided by 2. As I said, the initial vertical velocity is 0, the final vertical velocity is 12 divided by 2, and that gives us an average vertical velocity of 6 meters per second. This can only be used if the vertical velocity is like so, if it's a constant acceleration. If it wasn't a constant acceleration, as in a straight line here, when we're plotting velocity against time, then of course we can't use this equation. So we have an average vertical velocity of 6 meters per second, and therefore the distance travelled vertically would be equal to the average vertical velocity times time would be 6 times 1.2 is also giving us the answer of 7.2 meters and of course that would be downwards now there's one last way which we could use in order to work this out which is using conservation of energy and this is a more tricky method I'm not going to work out the answer obviously we've worked it out twice and we found the same value 7.2 meters so as the object the ball in this case is falling downwards what's happening if we just think about this vertical motion it's converting it'll have up at this point the maximum potential energy and just as it hits the ground at this point it'll have maximum kinetic energy so what we could do we could say that it's loss in potential energy so as it's falling, it's converting that potential energy to kinetic energy down at this point just as it hits the ground. So its loss in potential energy is equal to its gain in kinetic energy. Then, of course, we would substitute in the equations for potential energy first. MGH is equal to half mv squared. And at this point, we have an m on both sides. We could actually cancel that on both sides a uh, we want h we're trying to find h the height dropped so we, if we divided both sides by g we would then get moving the paper up therefore the height is equal to half v squared over g a little bit more tricky now as i said the method I would be using, the method I would find simplest would be the one where we're working out the area under the velocity time graph. So we knew that the velocity was going from zero, an initial velocity u of zero, to 12 meters per second in 1.2 seconds. So if I was to find that answer again, this was it here. I would say this would be the method I would be trying myself, personally. So as I said, in 1.2 seconds, the velocity is going from 0 to 12. And of course, we can just work out the area under this graph. But as I said, there are more than just one way to work that out. And basically, that's us at the end of the question. So we'll see you again next time. Thanks very much.